Welcome back to Newsmax Now. Topping your headlines today, President Obama, while in Buenos Aires, acknowledges that the United States was too slow to condemn human rights violations during Argentina's 1976 to 1983 dictatorship. President Obama's visit coincided with the 40th anniversary of the coup, where security forces killed 30,000 people. Secretary of State John Kerry held talks with Russian President Vladimir Putin in Moscow. The pair credited cooperation between the U.S. and Russia for some of the success made with the Syrian conflict. A tough news conference for Alabama Governor Robert Bentley. He acknowledged that he made sexual comments to one of his aides. Those comments were captured on tape apparently two years ago. The governor denies having any sort of affair and says he will not resign from office. And check this out. U.S. authorities seized this tunnel that crossed the U.S.-Mexico border. The seizure followed an investigation that netted more than a ton of marijuana and resulted in four arrests. The tunnel was a length of four football fields. It extended from a restaurant in Mexicali, Mexico to a newly built house in Calexico, California. All right, back to politics. Let's talk more about Ted Cruz and Donald Trump. Cruz is virtually tied with Donald Trump. Nationally, Trump gets about 41% versus Cruz with 38%, well within the poll's 5% margin of error. Now, the two are also tied in Wisconsin, ahead of that state's primary, which is less than two weeks away on April 5th. Wisconsin will play an important role in this election. Many members of the top GOP press see that state's primary as the final chance to stop Donald Trump before the convention this summer. And that's where we want to bring in today's roundtable. Joining us today, attorney Emily Campagno and Rick Unger, senior political contributor at Forbes.com. He's also the host of Steel and Unger at Sirius XM. Thank you both for joining us. Hey, Miranda. Emily, first to you, Bill Crystal, editor at the Weekly Standard, says if Trump loses Wisconsin, he probably won't get the 1,237 delegates needed for the nomination. But if he wins, it looks more and more likely that he's a nominee. Give us your take. I agree with that. And I think the biggest lesson here is I don't understand why, especially in mainstream media, we haven't yet taken his candidacy seriously. I think from the get-go, his supporters were actually quite clear that he was a serious candidate with serious efficacy behind him. A lot of people, and especially in the establishment, didn't take him seriously. And now we're surprised playing catch-up. And that plays into now how crucial Wisconsin vote is in terms of Cruz's participation, obviously. But to me, it indicates we've been a bit behind the bar in terms of Trump's candidacy to begin with. Rick, do you think that Wisconsin is the last chance to stop Trump? Well, let me first say that I think the mainstream media has been taking Trump seriously. I feel like that was something out of about five or six months ago. Uh, as to Wisconsin, it's hard to say if it's the last chance to stop him. You know, it seems like every state on a big Tuesday is the last chance to stop him. But, you know, if he can pull off Wisconsin, it's obviously going to get him even closer. I think he's probably already there. Because uh, then you have New York and you have California, and he's leading in polls uh, in both those states. So, you know, I mean, I wouldn't overstate Wisconsin. It's a large state, a lot of delegates. It matters. But I think, you know, they get us all riled up and say every state's going to be the one. Right. Well, at 42 delegates, winner take all. Emily, uh, Scott Walker, the governor of that state, uh, formally through his support behind Senator Ted Cruz. Uh, this was following uh, Jeb Bush's support of Ted Cruz earlier yesterday. Will this help him at all in Wisconsin? I do think it will have a huge effect for Cruz's campaign in, in Wisconsin, definitely. And just to go back, not to backtrack, but in terms of um, the comment about mainstream media being five months ago, I totally understand that. But even our discussion now, which is germane to the situation, we're still discussing statistics in terms of potential for Trump not to take the nomination. And I think it's what it really is is clear that there would have to be an extreme diversion in his campaign right now for him not to be successful at this point. Point. And sure, even with Walker's endorsement, of course, that will make a big difference. But to me, it's still like scooping a handful out of the ocean. Rick, what do you think? You know, I didn't hear the question, Miranda. We had oh, a okay. Well, let's we had some technical problems. Go okay, ahead and tell me what it was. I, I was asking Emily uh, about the governor, uh, Scott Walker. 
Uh, throwing his support behind Ted Cruz, as you know, Jeb Bush, uh, former governor of Florida, also threw his support behind Ted Cruz. I want to get your thoughts. Do you think either of those endorsements, if not both, will help Ted Cruz build that momentum that he needs to get a win in Wisconsin? I think there's something else going on with Governor Walker. If you paid attention to what he said today, <laughs> I did. He said that he said <laughs> that if uh, uh -huh. if it, he believes that the convention is going to be going to be open, and if it is, he doesn't believe that the convention will turn to any of the candidates currently running. Right. In so other do you words, think he's hinting Scott Walker the, saying he's the, hinting that it'll be him. Uh, oh, is that what you think? Oh, okay, yeah. okay. I interpreted that totally differently uh, when he said that. I mean, yeah, it's kind of like half-heartedly throwing your support behind Ted Cruz, but well, saying, I really what? don't think he's necessarily going to make it. But I was thinking that it was actually he was referring to House Speaker Paul Ryan. No, no, no. Also I from Wisconsin. You, I, I promise you, Scott Walker has been in mourning the past number of months, realizing he dropped out of that race way too early that the way things developed and the way things changed, he left way too soon. But what people have to remember is why he left. He left because he was a completely unprepared candidate who was making himself look bad at every turn. So he's not gonna get the nomination, but that's what he's thinking about. Emily, do you agree? Yes, that last point, we had a bit of technical difficulty, so I just came in at that last point, and I do agree. I actually think that's a really astute point, and the, the biggest thing here is the unpredictability that these campaigns have run. Who would have thought Rubio would have left in the situation that he did? So I absolutely agree that Walker left too early, but that, yes, he was unprepared, and that's why. I think he's kicking himself and probably hoping for a spot in terms of the administration later, but again, we'll see what impact it has in the global scale after Wisconsin. Yeah, and uh, if memory serves me correctly, weren't you a Rubio's supporter, speaking of Marco yeah. Rubio? Uh, yes. I, who, who are I, you throwing your support behind now? Oh, gosh. It's a really <laughs> Hillary Clinton. Clinton. You know, oh, to, to, nice it, try there. Nice try there, Rick. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um, I think, uh, you know, I, I am still undecided. I will say that. I am still undecided. All right. But it's definitely not Hillary Clinton, right? Correct. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. <laughs> Uh, we only have a few uh, seconds remaining, but I do want to ask you, Rick, uh, we spoke with Newsmax CEO Chris Reddy earlier, and he says it's just I've time for John Kasich to get out of the race. Uh, do you agree with that? Actually, I, I don't. Chris is not going to like this. I'm just disagreeing with the boss. But I, I don't agree. You're fired. No. Just kidding. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, exactly. Pack up. I don't agree. Uh, listen, I don't think Kasich's going to end up with the nomination. But remember why somebody like that stays in the race. For the same reason that Bernie Sanders does, even though his path to the nomination is pretty much at an end. They stay in there to have a say in the platform. They stay in there to have a say on the rules committee. They right. stay in to be a factor and a player as at the convention makes no sense for them to get out at this point i know and by the way everybody who was saying you know if, if he didn't get out it would cost ted cruz in utah he wouldn't get the 50 percent for the winner take all cruz still got 68 percent of the vote so fair enough you know <laughs> fair it, enough i'm running out of time but emily yes or no uh 10 seconds yes or no should case get out uh, yes, he should, but a point on Bernie. I don't think he's out yet. I think he should stay in, absolutely. It, oh, it we're going to talk about Bernie. We're going to talk about Bernie. Don't worry. We're going to be uh, going to the oh, left okay. very shortly after the break. Uh, we were talking about Kasich, but we're going to be right back. Coming up next on Newsmax Now, Bernie Sanders may have picked up a few states this Tuesday, along with the superdelegate, to top it off. But is it too little, too late? Uh, Emily's saying no. We're going to talk more about that coming up. Welcome back to Newsmax Now. I'm Miranda Khan. Bernie Sanders picks up a new superdelegate today after his big win in Idaho on Tuesday. But is it too little, too late? As Hillary Clinton continues to build her lead in the race for the Democratic nomination, she is increasingly ignoring Sanders to focus on Donald Trump and the general election. But now Democrats warn Clinton, well, don't ignore Sanders just yet. This according to The Hill. Sanders has a lot of appeal especially for younger voters. Well, they have appeal for him, younger voters, who will be crucial to Clinton when it comes to the general election. And Clinton risk alienating them if she acts like the race is over between Sanders and herself. And according to the new Bloomberg politics poll, the race isn't over yet. Bernie Sanders is virtually tied with Hillary Clinton, as you can see, nationally, 49 to 48%, though 3% say they're still undecided. Now let's welcome back into this 
Roundtable, rejoining us, Attorney Emily Campagno and Rick Unger, senior political contributor at Forbes.com. He's also the host of Steel and Unger on Sirius XM. Thanks for sticking around. Emily, since, since you kind of segue there beautifully to our topic today, let's start with you. Uh, is it too soon for Clinton to, to count Sanders out now? I think so. And remember, we talked about this a little bit ago, and I said it smacks of her narcissism. So, yes, it is too soon. Yes, it still smacks of her narcissism. And I think especially in terms of the younger voter, they're gravitating towards Bernie Sanders in part because of his humility. I don't think they're attracted to her her hubris. And it, it's interesting to me the fact that in terms of the negatives pulled by his campaign, it's his lack of foreign policy experience when her foreign policy experience is negative. So I think that's going to resonate with those younger voters. If she continues to ignore him, it will be detrimental. Let's ask you, Rick, is she, Clinton, alienating younger voters by dismissing Sanders too soon? Well, I don't think she is dismissing him too soon. She's been turning to Trump more and more and more, but right, that's she's what you pivoting. expect. Look, this is, this is a matter of numbers, folks. You know, you point out that they're now tied in that one poll, which they are, but remember something. The Democrats do not have winner-take-all states. It's all proportional. Bernie Sanders won two states on Tuesday night, and he netted exactly 10 votes, uh, 10 delegates more than Hillary for the night, including that superdelegate he picked up. That is not a trajectory that's going to get it done for him. If he splits the states from here on in, because they're tied 50-50, he can't get enough delegates. Hillary has won the delegate count absent something. You know, there's always something that could happen and especially with Hillary, something could happen. So that's that. In terms of dismissing him too soon, I think too much is being made about it. There'll still be some debates. She'll still deal with Bernie. Uh, and right now what she's working on, I can tell you, is trying to figure out how to get those young followers to feel better about her because she is going to need them. Emily, and how should she do that? Well, first of all, she needs to address them specifically. And I think she needs to address the weak parts of her campaign. She needs to address the fact that she's had protection for 30 years, address how she feels about what she can do for millennials. At this point, I don't think we've really seen that. And she really is focusing on this middle class and middle America. And that's been successful thus far. But she hasn't, in addition to her ignoring Sanders' campaign, she is ignoring those younger class. So she needs to speak to them directly on issues that they deem important. And if those are on this social democratic platform that Bernie's running on, then she needs to explore those and say, well, look, here's how there's commonalities or here's why I make this distinction and really speak to them. She needs to, to go to cities like San Francisco and go to Twitter and go to these places that, that work I don't know and talk to, to them about I don't know how to point this out, but she was in San Francisco speaking at a university campus yesterday. So she's taken your advice. Um, she is speaking to the issues. Yeah, it's Seattle, just that yes, the, but really not helping. And she hasn't even addressed, for example, and a lot of media outlets haven't picked up the fact that there are allegations that members of her campaign are who are operating and funding websites for Sanders that are then resulting in attacks on him. So I think there's, there's, there is a lot of internet activity and in speak, especially among millennials. Well, that's a, that's a good campaign speech against yes. Hillary. That's fine. I mean, <laughs> I haven't heard of this, but I mean, if we're talking about how she gets the younger kids to come along, which she does have to do. Listen, this campaign is largely going to be decided by those younger people. Do you really uh, think so, Rick, though? Because oh, I, I do. I think it's critical. and I think it's a big issue for her. Um, I think she can do it, but it's only, look, here's what's going to happen. They're going to get to the convention. I promise you, Bernie Sanders will be treated extremely well at that convention. He will have his impact on the Rules Committee. He will have his impact on the platform. He will have an impact. And then what's going to happen? If you really want to look to the future, Hillary will get the nomination. The Democratic Party will turn more to the left with Elizabeth Warren in the pivotal Lee role. And it's going to be up to Elizabeth Warren to deliver the kids that have, have gotten so enthralled by Bernie Sanders to Hillary for this election. Hmm, that's an interesting theory. Last word to you, Emily. 15 seconds. I think that whole characterization smacks of the typical Hillary supporter, which is that there's no consideration for other options and for other people. Only one other problem. I'm not, a, I'm, I'm not a Hillary supporter, so if I'm smacking of it, I'm not sure how that goes. I'm not He just wanted anything. you to be a Hillary supporter, Emily, apparently. Yeah. <laughs>
I'm, I, I haven't picked anybody. All right. Well, thank you both. Uh, you have my vote, both of you. Uh, Emily, Rick, thank you both for joining us. Pleasure to have you as always. Coming up, Newsmax Health Editor Nick Tate joins us to talk about the attacks in Brussels and how the hospitals responded. Plus, we'll talk about whether or not the U.S. is prepared to deal with such an attack. We'll be right back.